Hello, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Howard Kornfeld. Uh, I'm a board certified emergency physician uh, for the last 35 years. Um, I have been uh, honored to, in the last several weeks, meet some of the top uh, critical care specialists working on the front line of the COVID crisis. These are innovative uh, doctors who have recognized that the standard protocols are not working. As we could see in New York, it's a disaster and that disaster is coming to other cities. So I was thinking of asking Pierre Corey to maybe introduce the subject further to help explain why this incredibly powerful treatment, which all of you are providing, is not being provided and how we can uh, help uh, change this situation very, very quickly. Yes. You know, when we talk about the therapy, I mean, there's a few therapies that we, we have in mind, but I would say like the, the, the core and the most powerful of them would be uh, the use of uh, corticosteroids in combination with intravenous ascorbic acid. Um, this is, uh, you know, hospital grade uh, intravenously delivered, where we delivered it at relatively high doses, and we maintain those concentrations in the blood uh, by giving it every six hours. Um, and it works synergistically with the steroids, and we found uh, many people have reported, I think all of us on this um, uh, panel uh, have published or done research or reported our results um, using those two, uh, the two main drugs in combination uh, in critical illness states, especially in severe infections and septic shock. But whenever you make a, a strong claim around a vitamin, um, I think most people, uh, most doctors are very conservative and uh, uh, skeptical of, of such claims. And so it's very hard uh, for uh, most physicians to adopt the therapy um, uh, fully. In critical care, we have uh, achieved dramatic reductions in morbidity and mortality, largely around mechanical ventilation, uh, judicious use of fluids and, and different uh, antibacterials. Um, and we have these great outcomes. Um, but here comes COVID and what's happening here is the crisis is that I think we're not starting effective treatments early enough and aggressively enough. And as a result of that failure, our ICUs are filling, our ventilators are running out. Uh, we're, we're now forced to, to devise these ingenious ways of splitting ventilators to ventilate multiple patients. And you know, one of the core principles of critical care that we might be forgetting is that time is of the essence. You need that, that, that we call it the golden hour of resuscitation. So as soon as someone falls ill, that's when the interventions need to be started. And I think the answer is actually not in the ICUs. I think by the time they get to doctors like us on this panel, uh, we're going to struggle, even with the, the powers that we have with, the, with these therapies working synergistically. My, my appeal is to the doctors out on the front lines, the doctors are first, first laying eyeballs on them in the wards, that they have to, they, we have to change our strategy here. It's not working. So just a few points with reference to COVID. So I think it's really important to treat patients for the disease they have and not for the disease we want to give them or we think they have. So there are really three fundamental concepts. Firstly, this is not typical ARDS. And if you intubate them early and put them on a ventilator, you're going to damage their lungs. You're going to harm them. Number two, this is a profound hyperinflammatory state. They have these ground glass opacities, which is inflammation, not fluid. And you need to give anti-inflammatory drugs. This is not the virus that's hurting the host. It's the acute inflammatory dysregulated response. That's why you need to use vitamin C and steroids. Steroids play a critical role in the synergy between vitamin C. The third point is these patients come in with a profound hypercoagulable state which is somewhat unique to COVID. Uh, so we believe that you need to give anticoagulate them up front. And indeed, if you look at the Shanghai guideline, they did two things or three things. I mean, it's a truly remarkable, and I didn't appreciate it when I first read it. They gave heparin, they gave vitamin C, and they gave steroids. So that's the first point. 
The second is you need to treat these people early, as I think Dr. Varone and Dr. Corey and Dr. Iglesias will reinforce. If you wait for them to crash and you wait for them to land up on a ventilator, the Titanic is already sinking. You have to intervene early and aggressively to prevent them deteriorating. And in this way, you can prevent them landing up on the ventilator which is actually harmful. I mean, seeing what vitamin C could do, I decided to start giving vitamin C very early. So let's say you are a patient that comes to me with, a, with shortness of breath and an abnormal CT scan, like the ones that have circulated among some of us. I mean, that is the moment when I put you in my, in my intermediate care unit and I start you on, on, on the cocktail. And, you know, we've had several variations of what we have done for the cocktail, but I have not had single death, not one death, and, you know, and I'm getting slammed with four to five additions uh, to the unit minimum. So, I mean, you don't need to sell me the vitamin C thing. I mean, I know it works. Yeah. What I'm hearing is yes. that in these 24 patients using uh, Dr. Merrick's protocol, essentially, with some variation, you have had uh, no deaths in 24, which is an astounding uh, accomplishment. Um, is that correct? That's exactly what I'm saying. Yes. If you start it early, your patients will you not even need to be intubated. Well, vitamin C had a, a profound effect, and clearly there's a synergistic effect uh, with the use of corticosteroids. Therapy early is of the utmost importance. This is a, you know, these patients start getting very inflamed by about five or six, and because the ERs are already congested, they're coming in at that time period to where the point they're going to get that, that subgroup of patients, that endotype of patients that has that coagulopathic and inflammatory response is going to be there. And then probably earlier treatment is when you're going to start seeing a, a, a better effect. The corticosteroids work in viral pneumonia. While there are two large studies in a patient with SARS, more than 5,000 patients, and there is another large study in patients which A1 and 1, all from the Chinese literature, indicating that the use of methylprednisolone, that is the one recommended by the task force of the Societal Clinical Care Medicine, Intensive Care Medicine from Europe, is associated with a significant reduction. The reduction in mortality was 50%. The protocol for steroids has been recommended by the Chinese, Korean, Japanese and Italian uh, uh, society. So it is already a part of the guidelines there. I think that all the physicians are making is really early treatment. You know, a lot of the thoughts before was to start once they get to the ICU, but what we're now finding, because the ICUs are now being overwhelmed, is to start as soon as they come into the emergency room, as soon as they're identified with COVID-19. Able to start that treatment within that first six hour time window we can prevent a lot of these people from ending up in the ICUs. And I was know that we're actually down to less than 15% capacity for ICU beds in New York City. When we talk about early treatment, we have to recognize that many centers around the country have long turnaround times for tests. Um, I would say in any high clinical suspicion of COVID, it should be started. What it really is, is a life-saving therapy. That's it. And it's actually been proven to be life-saving in the condition that is killing the world. The condition called acute respiratory distress syndrome. The patients are dying of overwhelming inflammation. We need to marshal our therapies that are directed at suppressing that inflammation. It's key to keeping these patients alive. I think that the patients coming in already to the ER have selected themselves out in a one major direction, and particularly if they have pulmonary findings. They are clearly most likely of the uh, a pro-inflammatory and coagulopathic genetic endotype that the, a large percentage of them uh, will end up very ill very quickly. They've already been at home sick for several days. So they're already at that time point where they're at that, that kind of hill before they go downhill. And that's when we should treat them from the emergency room. So the common denominator uh, in, in these five uh, physicians who are at the front lines, critical care units, watching or actually ordering the drugs themselves is that intravenous vitamin C 
intravenous ascorbic acid along with corticosteroids given at the right time, not for mild illness. This is for when the, uh, the oxygen is, is dropping, the, 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 the virus is essentially taking over the lungs, a, a massive inflammatory response is occurring, and, and it needs to be done extremely expeditiously within hours, if possible, of presentation to emergency rooms. This, as far as we understand, is not what's being done uh, in a widespread way yet in the United States. This is the main issue, one of the main issues. Certain academic medical leaders looked at some what are called randomized controlled trials, which were done improperly, that did not show the life-saving effect of the intravenous vitamin C and the steroids. And, and clearly, these studies were designed poorly. And even as we speak, another study is being planned to look at vitamin C, to give vitamin C versus placebo. Um, we think that would be very misguided to start a randomized controlled trial right now. Right now, we need to treat uh, these patients with this uh, treatment. I think patients are dying needlessly. And I think this is a terrible shame that we're allowing this to happen. It is an outright shame. We have effective therapies that can alter the course of the disease. We need to institute them early, aggressively, and we need to prevent patients deteriorating and landing on a ventilator. Once they land on a ventilator, we know the course is prolonged. The mortality may be up to 60 to 70%. Takes him a long time to get off the ventilator, and we really have no idea of their functional capacity once they get off the ventilator. We have to do everything in our power to aggressively treat them to prevent them going onto the mechanical ventilator. People that are presenting to the hospital are already a group of sickest patients. Remember, 80 plus percent are being treated at home, so it's that 20 percent or even maybe even less that are sickest, so that's why it's so important to treat early. You've already been, they've already been self-selected out to be the sickest of, of the patients being infected.